Howdy everyone, my name is Griffin Furlong, I'm a civil engineer in the land development industry, and in today's video, we're going to be covering part two of how to grade a commercial site. In part one, I went over the very basics on just where to begin, as well as some of the things to look out for. What you can expect here in part two is I'm going to be answering some of the questions that I received in relation to drainage and why the FFE was set where it was. If you haven't checked out that last video, I highly suggest you do so, but this is also a good place to pick up. So feel free to stay tuned into this episode, but I'm ready to dive into it, so let's get to it. All right, so like I said, I'm just going to dive into some of the questions that I've received and hopefully this paints a better picture of how we analyze the drainage and the grading of a commercial site. And again, this is a 12 and a half acre parcel with a 138 thousand square foot warehouse. Question number one, don't you need to do the local drainage design first? That is a heck of a question and it is very appropriate for this topic. So the answer is yes you will need to do the preliminary sizing. And typically I'm conservative at the forefront because it's much better to decrease the pipe size later than to increase the pipe size. If you start increasing the pipe size, that just leads to more cost and potentially more factors to look at with utility conflicts. So, you know, when I'm first kind of analyzing this site, I'm mostly working on this pond's stormwater management. So this is where all of the treatment and attenuation calculations come into play. I'm not even starting any sort of grading yet. So a lot of times I'm running stormwater models, I'm developing basins associated to this pond to make sure that it can actually treat and attenuate all of this site's impervious area. Now again, these are all things that are happening prior to grading. In this video, we'll not cover any sort of pond stormwater management. However, I will talk a little bit about the local drainage design. And what I mean by local is the local is all of these pipes right here. These are all of your local inlets. This is where stormwater is hitting the pavement and dropping into these inlets and going into the pond. So when I'm first looking at this type of stuff, typically I like to minimize the amount of stormwater infrastructure on this site. There are a million ways to skin the cat here. You know, I could have put inlets in a whole bunch of places, you know, as shown, but is this actually necessary? The answer to that is no. Now, since I was trying to minimize the amount of infrastructure, one way that I was looking at this was I consider just splitting this site in half of where, you know, water falls on the pavement and in the building. So I'm drawing a little basin here. This is really preliminary, but this basin that I'm drawing had a particular area, you know, let's call it blank amount of acres. Well, that particular amount of area has a certain flow associated, Q. And a lot of times you can actually just use a simple rational method to develop a flow. It is very conservative compared to other method methods like the SCS method. I actually have a really nifty spreadsheet. So if you guys haven't checked out my land development hub, I have a link in the description. I have a whole bunch of pipe sizing tools, lift station spreadsheets, a whole bunch of really good stuff. So I, I checked that out. So based on this calculation, I can come up with a C factor, which is actually unitless. And essentially it's a weighted factor of all the impervious area and pervious area. Impervious area being the pavement, the building. You know, the higher the C factor, the more runoff. So let's just say for this random example, you know, 0.7, it's gonna be a number between the zero to one. Then we're gonna multiply that by the intensity. So there's a certain intensity associated to these design storm events. In this case, our design is all based off the 10 year, 24 hour, which in this case, I believe it was five inches. And then we're going to multiply that by the area. So once you actually get this Q, you're able to start sizing the largest downstream pipe. Well, this kind of leads me into my second question, which was why not connect the pipes in this northern run? So let me kind of uh, erase some of the stuff we got here. So again, why not just connect these runs right here? Why do we have separate runs? Well, when I was doing that previous calculation, I noticed that there were some potential cost savings. Me connecting that pipe right there actually ended up upsizing all of these pipes and their structures, which again includes this NES, which is a mitered end, these inlets all right here, and all of those pipe sizes. The cost differential was greater by doing that than to just not connect the two and to simply just add 
that structure in pipe, believe it or not. Again, as the engineer, you always want to ask yourself, can I save money? I mean, imagine if you were the client or if this was your project and it's coming out of your bank account, you want to try to save some money. So we actually killed two birds with one stone there. So I got a lot of questions about why not the local drainage design? Well, we are figuring that out and the locations of these inlets matter too. So I'll get to that with question three. Question three, why do you have the inlets the way that you do? So why do I have all of these inlets placed as I do on this plan? Well, like I said in the very beginning, there are a million ways to skin a cat. I could have graded this in a hundred different ways, maybe even a million different ways, and maybe had a million different types of inlet configurations. But there are a couple facts to consider. Fact one, there is a maximum distance required per each inlet. So if I were to just zoom in to some of these inlets down here, so why, why am I showing it like this? Why do I have an inlet placed here, here, here? Well, there is a maximum distance that you can have between inlets. Now, if you do this, that means that you'll have less inlets. Every inlet is a cost associated. So I wanna definitely maximize the amount of pipe that I have between the runs. Now, the second fact is that there is a maximum capacity of these inlets. So let's say just for giggles here, why, why can't you just have maybe one inlet? Okay, well, if I were to just have one inlet, maybe just right here, I would say right in the middle. And yeah, just, just grade the road, you know, here and have it slope all the way down to that inlet. And then, yeah, just grade it there and have it slope all the way down to that inlet. Well, there's a maximum capacity associated. All of this drainage area that I'm going to draw in blue, again, has a Q or a flow. And this inlet right here has a maximum capacity. So this is why I laid out the inlets the way I did. I was looking at a few different options here, which was maximizing the pipe run and understanding capacity. But I'm not going to dive into all that in this video, but I wanted to give you the background as to why I'm making these decisions. Okay, last but certainly not least, one of the major questions was why was the finished floor elevation set to 15.6? Again, normally you will need to set your FFE, you know, your building's FFE, one to two feet above that 100 year. So why didn't I just set it 12? versus the 15.6. Well, this involves knowing the details about your commercial site. This is a warehouse with a truck loading zone. So that's the first fact. This is a loading zone. So if I were to draw this cross section of this guy right here, and again, yeah, since you guys aren't familiar with this project, let me kind of highlight this. All of this area right here is a truck loading zone. Trucks are coming in, they're backing in and they're loading up the trucks from these warehouses, right? So what this cross section looks like right here is I have a truck loading zone that's flowing away from the building. And then there's an increase of three feet. Again, an increase of three feet. So that pushes up this FFE inside of the building. These are very important things to know. So that is in fact what drove up this FFE. Not only did that drive up the FFE, but let me also show you. The client didn't want any flooding within the truck loading area, which means no inlets in the truck loading area. Because sometimes these inlets are allowed to flood certain storm events. But again, you always have to consult your municipality's code. Sometimes you can't flood any storm event. In this case, we were able to flood a little bit of the 25 year and 100. So during that 25 year and 100, this guy's getting a little bit flooded, but, but we could not flood the truck loading zone. So since we couldn't have any inlets or little French drains with, within the truck loading zone, we had to set the inlets away from the truck loading zone. But let's think about what that does. If these inlets are set at a minimum elevation based on the pond's design high, which if you watched that last video was 10, all these inlets at minimum have to be 10. And if I just slope away from the truck loading zone, meaning away from the building, away, well, that means my grade from that inlet up to the truck loading zone is going up. So not only do I have these grades pushing up from the inlets, but also the truck loading zone, three feet that I need. You know, remember, remember that cross section? So I drew a little cross section there, inlet. Again, this is sloping up so that's what was driving the ffe and that's why it's really important guys when you're doing commercial projects that you ask 
these types of questions and really understand the details of your project. Honestly, that's all I have for today. I wanted to keep this short and sweet. I know that there were a ton of questions about the drainage and how I set some of the inlets. So I hope I was able to provide some high level insights to this. You know, if you guys are interested, I will walk through some of the preliminary sizing that we do. That could totally be the next video. If you found this video helpful, hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out and keeps me motivated to helping all the aspiring civil engineers out there. Hope you guys have a good day. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.